Hey guys, so today I'm installing the Ultra Mini display from Handshow. Let's take a look at it. So this is what it looks like uh, sitting behind my yoke steering wheel. But if I had a regular round wheel, it would have plenty of room to view it through the opening there. I just love the way any display looks behind a yoke though. But what I like about this is as you can see, it does not block the airflow that comes out of here like all the other screens I've had that uh, bolt down to this section right here. This one actually clips down on top of the steering column. This is what the packaging looks like. You get your instructions in here. And inside the box, you get the wiring harness, a pry tool, and the screen itself. If you look at the wiring harness, it looks confusing at first, but I promise it's really easy. If you have an older Model 3 or Model Y with an Intel computer, then you just need to connect this one and this one. That's all it is. And if you have the newer versions with the AMD processor, then you still connect this one, but now you've got an additional two that you connect and you do not have to connect this one. So. Basically, this powers the screen, and this connection for your Intel processor supplies power and data through the CAN bus. But if you have the AMD, you have a separate cable for power and a separate cable for the AMD's uh, CAN bus. You really don't need any special tools other than just that pry tool to pull some of the panels apart here. But this is going to go right here. So let's get started. The first thing you're going to do is go into your menu here and select steering. And what we're going to do is make the steering wheel come back and down as far as possible just to give yourself more room to work with in this area here. The computer is under the dashboard on the passenger side, so what we're going to do next is remove this dash panel and run the wiring all the way to that side. Once you remove these side pieces from both sides, now you can just gently pry up on this piece and it'll pop off like that. And this is what it looks like with the dashboard off. And the next thing we're gonna do is remove these push pins. These are those famous pins that Tesla uses on all the panels inside. Now that we have this part undone, we can just start prying along the side seam here to remove the top cover of the steering column. here is your exposed steering column now. So next we're going to transfer this piece from the plastic to the new screen. So to do this, it's really easy. You got to remove a clip on the side. You just pinch these together and then push them through the holes. It's just a few of those and then this piece will come off. This is the new screen here. So if you flip it over, we're just going to reattach this cover piece to the back side of this. Just snap it into place. All right, before we snap this back down into place, we need to run our power cable to the screen so we can route it up through the ventilation system and out of the way. What I like about Handshow's wiring harness is that every connection has a unique connector and that way you can't mix them up. You just connect which one fits. So 
So now that we have the wiring just kind of routed out of the way here, you're gonna insert this back in and pull it towards you so this lip here slides up underneath the steering wheel and then everything else just kind of clips down into place. Now, if you want to tidy this up a bit, I taped these two pieces together. And if you want, you can start taping down to the dash here. That way it doesn't move around uh, when you're driving. You can route this however you see fit, but you basically just want to have this go all the way down to the very end of the dash so we can run it underneath the dash where the connectors are. Here's a closer look of how I have it exiting the, the screen area here. And like I said, you can, either do run it up like this or make a bend and just tape it down like that. You just wanna make sure these connectors are free from uh, being covered up because this is how the dashboard connects back down to the car through those clips. So now comes the fun part. This is where we actually have to connect it to the computer underneath. And to get to that, we're gonna just pry this off. It just pops right off. And then there's some more of those little push pulls that we need to remove from under here. And this whole bottom dash will just drop out. We'll disconnect the light cable and a speaker cable just to get this out of the way. Then you'll have plenty of room to work with uh, getting that plug in. Now we can route the wiring down through here to where it comes out the bottom. And I removed about four of these little push-pull uh, pins to make this drop down. So all you have to do from here is just remove these little wires from the light and from the speaker, and then this will just become free. You can also remove this little push pin here. Take that one out. And this piece just pops off. You just pull it back, kind of remove some of the trim around it and that makes it easier to get the wiring down in underneath here. Also, if you have an AMD processor, then your two connectors for the power and the CAN bus are gonna be behind here anyways. I don't have those connectors on mine. This is a 2019 version. So if you have a newer model, you'll have the connectors behind here, which makes it actually easier than the Intel because now I gotta go way up into the computer here for mine. Here's just a peek behind that panel. If you have the AMD processor, then that white connector there is gonna be for your power, but you'll also have a blue connector right here for your CAN bus. I don't have the blue connector, uh, so I'm gonna to have to connect mine to the computer up underneath, and we'll do that here in just a second. I'm gonna to try to route this wire down through here and out into that corner, kind of that way, so it comes out the bottom over here. All right, so just to show you how I routed this down through here, kind of behind this little piece right here, where it goes down around there and down out through here, where it's just kind of sticking out the top here like that. And just to simplify things, I just wound this up here. These are the CAN bus and the power for your AMD processors that I don't need. So they're just gonna rest up here underneath this uh, panel. This is what I'm actually gonna be connecting. And particularly this piece right here goes into the computer and you're gonna just kind of daisy chain it with this other piece here. So you're gonna remove the other piece that's in the computer now and plug that into here. And then this piece goes into the computer. We're gonna be removing this gray harness right here. Leave the white one alone. It's the gray one on top that you're gonna remove. But before that, let's turn the power off on the car. On your screen, you're gonna to go to safety and then scroll all the way to the bottom where you can power off.
that I've got everything connected, let's go ahead and start up the car and power it on to see what happens. All right, it works. Looks like we're booting up over here as well. So the last step is just reassemble everything and we're done. All right, the installation is complete. Everything's put back together. Now we just need to configure it. Okay, so to configure this, you're gonna back out of your steering wheel control so you don't have anything pending there. And you're going to press your right scroll wheel to the right and do a long hold. So I'm gonna press and hold it. And now we've got a menu we can work with here. All right, so I'm gonna change my temperature to Fahrenheit. And again, I'm just using the right scroll wheel to press to the side and then scroll up and down. So you can also put your time zone. One thing I found interesting is there's different user interfaces. So there's one and two. One looks like this, where you've got your car here. And if I open a door, it will show the doors open, your miles per hour. Uh, it does have your range and your battery here. But if I go back and I change that UI to UI2, it gives it a unique look. Now, it actually shows your tire pressure over here, miles per hour in the middle, and what gear you're in off to the side here. Also, your following speed. If you have like your cruise control or autopilot, uh, you can set it how many car spaces uh, between the car in front of you. It shows that. It still shows your range and your battery percentage. If I pop the door open, it still shows the door open here. So I kind of like this because uh, the other one doesn't show my, my tire pressure and uh, this one does. So I think I might keep it on this one. Another funny feature that this thing has is there's a setting where you can enable plaid mode. So anytime you start the car, even if you're not launching it, just put it into drive and start moving it a screen goes into plaid mode. And of course you can disable that in the settings. If I do a long press here, I can go to the very end and turn plaid off. When you have plaid mode on, it only stays on for a couple seconds and then it goes back to this uh, default screen here. So this is what it looks like. Uh, in person, the screens are a lot brighter than what my camera's picking up. It does do a pretty good color match between the two screens. So it looks pretty factory. And this is what it looks like during night mode. So what do you guys think about the Ultra Mini screen from Handshow? Do you like it? Or do you like the bigger ones better? I've had them all. They all have something unique to add. They're all good. It's just personal preference. This one will allow more airflow through the vents there. So I actually kind of like this one better. So I'm going to go ahead and keep using this one for a while and see how it goes. But if you have any of these Handshow screens, go ahead and comment below your thoughts on what you think about them if they're good, if you've had success or failures with them. And if you like the video, let me know by hitting that thumbs up. If you want to see more, please consider subscribing. I'll see you guys in the near future. Bye-bye.